Uh, I think it's important to bring into the focus here that, you know, we've made that point. He's mainly a central midfielder, but played much of last season to great effect as a right back, which, as we touched upon earlier, would mark him out as a potential inverted right back in Ange Postacoglu's system. It would allow him to have that flexibility as maybe having him as an alternative to Pedro Porro. I think we've all been, you know, I, I think all of us as a, as a fan base have been saying, if you really want to be a club that is really pushing for those title, you know, tried in places or want to be in amongst the top four, you've got to have a side that can compete both, again, with a squad and a first team that can really push that level. That's, again, having two competent fullbacks for, I say, the different areas of the football pitch. And again, when you look at Archie Gray as a player, we made this point, 52 appearances last season, made more tackles than any other player aged 21 and under in the championship. And Matt, I do want to come over to you with him tactically because I think this is an element where, again, I'm going to flash up this heat, Matt, if you don't mind, which, Matt, you can give us a bit more detail on because tactically, how is this going to affect what this player can bring to Spurs from that level? Yeah, it's it, tactically, he's extremely interesting because, like you mentioned there, he is a natural defender or a natural defensive midfielder, kind of number six, but he was forced into that that right-back position last season. And as, as Jamie says in the chat, he played a midfield against Chelsea in the FA Cup. And while Leeds couldn't get the couldn't get over the line with that result, he was absolutely remarkable. And I, I feel like Leeds fans still talk about that every day. But looking at the heat map, I think with the caveat that it is a little bit skewed by the fact that he did play in different positions. You can you can see from how 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 much there is out there in the right hand side that he he has played at right back as more of a traditional fullback, a more traditional right back. But he has inverted inside a little bit as well, which you can see from the the kind of redder areas there. If you look maybe just in line with the the side of the box at, at the lower. The, the lower part if that makes sense so he, he does have experience in, in in a little bit of uh both of those areas and, and both of those roles but what i think is is extremely interesting is his his strengths on the ball fit in really well to or inverted right back and or number six and what i mean by that is he's, he's really press resistant with with a wide passing range and dare i say again very similar to lucas bergval um but he he's he's really capable in, in kind of using his body to, to spin away from, from pressure behind him, from kind of any, any bit of trouble that he has when he's in possession, he can use that body to, to, to spin away with a really close kind of turn radius and really close control. And the, the ability to do that can really open up a game. And I don't want to compare him to Moussa Dembele because Moussa Dembele was just one of the best that, that, that we've seen at, at Tottenham at that in, in, in the Premier League era, but it's a similar sort of style. Well, not being there in, in the quality yet, or just one little spin, one little turn, one little drop of the shoulder in the middle of the park can, can really open up a game. And the fact that he's able to do that in really congested areas kind of lends towards him being a more central player than than a wide player. I mean, he can, he can drop a shoulder and take someone on, but he's so much better at spinning away from from a little bit of pressure and he's able to dribble with the ball. He's able to to play passes as well to, to open up the game. But that ability to, to receive the ball deep, you either have him in, if you can imagine where Power will play, if, uh, if if we're playing a game right now where he he come into that inverted role, he'd have maybe the winger pressing from behind or or one of the centre midfielders pushing up with him, where he has the option if he receives the ball crucially back to goal or back back to play, I suppose back to attack facing his own goal, where he he can spin past that pressure. He has the passing ability to to maybe play a quick ball into our number six, a quick ball back to the centre backs, or to sweep the ball around himself out to Dan Kulazewski or Brennan Johnson or whoever's playing out on on the right wing. He can do that in the number six role. Something we saw a lot from Basuma earlier in the season that, that kind of faded out as, as the year went on. But when, when Vicario has the ball, the two centre-backs split, the full-backs invert. So it's almost like a square in front of Vicario. And you have Basuma coming into that space in the middle where he can receive the ball, again, facing his own goal. Again, that's something that Gray would fit very well, whether he wants to spin away or play those passes to his centre-backs to then turn and face the play and move up with the ball or to, to drop a shoulder and play a ball out wide or play a ball into, into one of the midfielders. Then when he gets past that point, when, when we've got past that kind of first line of pressure and he, he's facing the play, he's really astute in in reading a game, maybe a step or two ahead and knowing, OK, should I play this ball? Should I try and put Crescencio Somerville in, in behind on this side? Or should I play the ball? Let's let's keep possession. Let's keep the ball moving. It's, it's not open enough just yet to to play that, that long ball, which he's really, really good at. But he just knows how to read that game and, and knows the, the, the right decision to make. And he's been praised a lot for, for that reading of the game. Um, and it's something that just kept things ticking over a lot for, for Leeds last season. But you also have to mention his ball-winning ability. And and you mentioned it there with the was it mo most tackles of any player yeah. under the age of 21. 90, yeah, 97 tackles. Yeah. That, that, that's outrageous. That, that, is, that is incredibly impressive. And yeah. again, for a player as young as he is, 
you wouldn't expect it to be one of his strongest traits. Defending 1v1, and there's a lot of really pacey, tricky wingers in in the championship. Mavadidi of Leicester would be one, Somerville, even though he plays with Leeds, would be another. But players like Jaden Philogene, um, Science as well, there's some really impressive players. But a lot of these, he, he I wouldn't say pocketed, but dealt with really well throughout the season. And all, all the different analysis pieces that I've read or, or listened to, they've all actually started by saying, despite his lanky frame, which I think is really interesting because it, it just shows that he's not, you wouldn't naturally expect this from a player that looks like him and a player that, that is built like him, but he yeah. still has managed to find his own way to deal with that. His timing of slide tackles is, is absolutely brilliant and he doesn't have the pace to keep up with a winger who gets past him. So he's learned to make sure that they don't get past him, that he doesn't give them that opportunity to, to break away in pace. But statistically he he doesn't stand out amongst uh, the, the very best and i saw someone say it a while ago that he, he looks bang average when it comes to t- to statistics that's a fair so that, that's a fair observation when you're looking at the numbers but if you if you consider that he's 18 and that he's playing out of position for me looking bang average is actually quite damn impressive and with with his numbers that with, with passing he ranks really well in passing accuracy and passing completion which you would expect will go hand in hand with not having a lot of progressive passes, but he actually does. And he actually comes out a little bit above average with progressive passes as well. So it means that he's moving the ball up the pitch. It means he's playing these, these dangerous balls. He's creating chances. You can see there are 18 created throughout the season, but he's doing it with success. And he's, he's for the majority of time, keeping, keeping possession as well. Um, so yeah, the, the, there's so many boxes ticked and I'm not going to just wax lyrical and, and avoid the, the, the negatives. He's not very strong in the air. Um, his crossing as well leaves a little bit be t- to be desired, which if he was in an inverted fullback role, maybe wouldn't be the biggest issue. Um, so there are definite we- weaknesses there. And obviously there- there's stuff to work on. He's only 18 years of age, but yep. if-, if you compare him to other players at his age around the world, he- he's he's right up there. And that-, that fee that you mentioned, if it is going to be about 35 million pounds, that would have him as the fourth most expensive player under the age of 18 in the history of football. And the three who are above him are Endrick, it was just gone to Real Madrid, expected to be, he's been called the next Pele. There's Rodrigo, Real Madrid, and Vinicius Jr., Real Madrid, are the only three under-18s who've, who've gone for a fee higher than that. So he's no in pressure. he's in really, really good... Co- no pressure, <laughs> absolutely no pressure. Yeah, no pressure he's he's in, in really esteemed company there. It's it, yeah. it's a, a bit of stress that I'm sure he's going to have to deal with, but mm. th- there's no doubt that Tottenham are getting an immensely talented and immensely mm. mature player, even though he's only 18. You know, we make the point about the potential and what we all feel. I think the real thing to really consider is as long as Andrew's getting who he wants, that's absolutely crucial in all this, right? Because again, it's his players. And as he said before, it's his head on the, his head on the block. 100%. Um, I, I wish I could control what the, what the fan base felt because a lot of the time things would be, would be very, very different. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's absolutely what the manager wants. And, and as we spoke about on and off the pitch, Archie Gray fits that and again i will reiterate i understand that some people may be frustrated that our first permanent signing spending a lot of money is just for for an 18 year old but what i would say is before any of this has even happened i can promise you that any anybody who's watched archie gray anyone who knows about archie gray you won't find a single one of them that says this is a bad move for tottenham and you know i think that's really important because we can argue about finances we can argue about priorities but a deal a standalone deal signing archie gray is massive and again, every big club in the Premier League wanted him. Every big club was watching him. Big clubs were in Europe were looking at Gray as a player that they they hoped they could bring in. Yep. And it looks as though Tottenham have won that race. And again, 